spring. The birds are chirping, the bees are buzzing, the butterflies are flying around and doing their thing. And you're thinking about starting your vegetable garden and who wouldn't wanna do that? But here's the thing, you may be new or you tried last year and it didn't go well. And here are four reasons that you're going to fail at spring vegetable gardening and what you should do instead. The number one reason you're gonna fail is that you don't actually understand your season. You understand the seasons that were taught to you or you're watching some YouTuber who lives somewhere in the world, but that's not your seasons. Your seasons may be different. Like here in Florida, a lot of people, well, this is why we make a big mistake is we start following all those Northern gardeners and we start to try to plant cabbages right now or lettuce and it goes so wrong. And the reason is, is that they're up in a temperate climate and they're starting to do their cold weather crops because it's still cold. But Florida right now, well, uh, the days are in the 70s. We're starting to head towards the 80s. We are not in cold weather crop. We are so very definitely in warm weather crops. So what do I mean by warm weather crops? I'm talking about things like peppers and tomatoes. These are the types of plants that really would like to grow in our season right now. So if you live down here in Florida or a similar climate, consider getting your warm weather crops going now that you're in spring. Second reason that you're gonna fail, well, you're gonna go and you're gonna pick out a tomato right now and it's gonna be one of those big juicy ones you want to have something like a beef steak and it's going to get there it's going to start growing it's going to get bigger and bigger and then the pests are totally going to eat it because see if you don't recognize the fact that you live in a subtropical or tropical climate well big is not necessarily better when it comes to vegetables what you actually want to do is find plants that put out lots of vegetables that are small that way they produce just as they're getting ripe, you snatch them and then they put out another round and another round and another round. And this is gonna allow you to get a lot of harvest without allowing the pest to take out your entire crop. Yes, you could get one beautiful beefsteak tomato, but that's it. You're gonna get one, maybe two versus you could get pounds and pounds and pounds by going a lot smaller. The other thing to consider is plants that have natural ways of protecting themselves, things like hot peppers, which will deter pests for much of the season, instead of you having to try to go and find pesticides and amendments to try to help your plant survive the conditions. So recognize your climate and the pest pressures that you're gonna have and know that sometimes smaller and frequent is much better than big and one time. And the number three thing that's going to make you fail, well, it's going to be that you gave your plant the wrong amount of sun. And when it comes to us down here in Florida, we only need about four to six hours of sun. So if you go and you open up the space so that there's absolutely no shade, well, your crops, they're going to be super unhappy. They really do not want that much sunlight. They actually are going to hate it and they're gonna do really badly and die on you. So you want about four to six hours. So you gotta think about how are you gonna provide shade for your vegetable garden throughout the day? Yes, if you lived up north, eight to 10 hours because the sunlight's not very strong, but down here in the subtropics, well, it is a lot stronger. So we need to consider one, only getting four to six hours and doing things like, well, here. I planted a tree on the western side and I put my bananas on the western side so that the strongest, highest, and most intense heat and humidity is coming. We're actually blocking the vegetable garden. So avoid failure number three and make sure that you have some shade for your vegetable garden. And here's the thing, the fourth reason that you're most likely gonna fail, it all has to do with the fact of, well, one of those rhymes that you learned as a kid, April showers grows Mayflowers, not down here in Florida. April's our driest month. And if you miss out on making sure that you've got a good source of water for your vegetable garden, well, yeah. While we do get rainstorms in the springtime down here in Florida, it's not consistent enough. So you need to make sure that you've got some irrigation or plans to do some watering because yeah, you're definitely gonna mess that one up. So don't count on April showers. Remember down here in Florida, the rainy season, that's summer. So how often do you go and water your garden? Well, I do mine about twice a week. That seems to be pretty sufficient during the dry season. You may need to add a third time depending on how long we go between rainstorms, but twice to three times a week is usually pretty sufficient. Now here's the thing, when you first put the plants in, you're gonna wanna do about every other day just to make sure that they get their roots established and they don't die on you. And now that you know what you need to do in order to not fail at your vegetable garden, well, next week we're gonna be putting together our spring vegetable garden plan and installing all those plants that I bought over there. And then make sure you don't miss it, go ahead and like, subscribe, and ring that bell for notifications, new videos each week. And while you wait for that, go ahead and check out these five spring crops that you should grow while you're waiting, okay? I'll see you soon. Bye.